ball baseball looks a little different this year than um, you know years past. How is the team adjusting to kind of the, the new protocols they have to follow? It's quite different. You're right, and it's uh, one of the biggest challenges I've had in my career in terms of organization. We have to stage everything properly. We get to manage the locker room protocols. We can't have more than 10 people in there at a time. And that really starts early in the day with our weight training program. Uh, so we have to stage that, uh, schedule that out for them. Our on-field work up to this point has been more individualized. Uh, we've had small groups out. We've done some offensive work, defensive, and of course the pitching staff. I like the process that we're going through. We've been intentionally slow with our process. Our first day of activity uh, as a unit was September 1. That's later than normal. Uh, we'll start our team practice phase this Friday, the 16th, which is a little later than normal. But I've kind of liked that process. It's given us a lot more time to uh, accomplish things with individual players. I think the players have worked hard in that timeline they've been provided. But you have to remember it's really four hours a week of work right now. We're in a slow phase. Uh, Friday we get to go to a more uh, extensive calendar of time. So I've been pleased so far. W one of the best things about this COVID world for this particular team, for me as a coach, we're very old. We've got a lot of returning people. Uh, so there hasn't been a lot of introductory coaching that has to be done. They've been here, they understand how we do things. Uh, I look forward to putting this team out there Friday and getting started in some scrimmage opportunities. Um, you know, this spring we kind of saw glimpses of how good this team could have been. Um, you know, what's, what's kind of the feel from them inside the locker room, just getting to be back out on the diamond? Well, first and foremost, uh, the excitement level for fall individual practice was the highest I've ever experienced because they were coming off a four month, no baseball time. Uh, typically our players never get too really excited about individual time because it's limited work and it's small capacity. Uh, they were just excited to be on the field. And, and I've told our players this fall, my, my, my message throughout the fall is let's be thankful. I appreciate the opportunity we have to be on the field any day we get it. Uh, we, we experienced the low point when our season was canceled, like other spring sports. We experienced limited activity, couldn't get a place to work out or throw for several months. So we're thankful for this, and our players, I think, have shown that attitude on a daily basis. I'll continue to remind them of that as we keep going toward the end of the fall, but uh, I like what we tried to accomplish. But I, I think probably a lot of coaches around the country uh, can say the same things. This, is the, this will be the most experienced group of college baseball players ever in any college season before because of all the return. And as a coach here, I can tell you, I'm very pleased with the experience we have. You know, you're, you're in a rare position. You've got all nine position players returning. Um, you know, what can fans expect from this squad? And what are some areas that you hope to see improve this fall? Well, I can tell you, this is my 32nd year in a college coaching capacity. And at no point in the 31 prior years have we returned every returning player every returning starter. That's never happened, and it never happens for any team. You lose somebody for some reason, senior, et cetera. Uh, so when you look at our lineup structure from the previous year, all nine guys that typically started for us are back. So there's some familiarity and comfort. I think our fans will be very familiar with the guys that play on our team this year from, from the previous years. Uh, we're gonna start Drew Frederick at shortstop for the you know, as a fifth year starter. We've had fifth year seniors before, Andy, but never five years as a starter. And so that's the first time in my career. But that, that gives us certainly some familiarity. Uh, we have to get better defensively as a team. I thought that was one of our weakest areas last year as a team. We have to improve defensively. That's what a lot of our commitment has been about this fall and our preparation work. Uh, both infield and in the, in the outfield component, we, we've got to improve. And then the, the lineup process always works itself out. I, I'm not sure who's going to hit where. It's way too early for that. Uh, but, but I know we've got guys that are capable of hitting in several different spots. 
Uh, I would be shocked if Rigsby Mosley and Drew Frederick aren't hitting one two in our lineup because they've been one two in our lineup the last two years. And that's probably where they'll start this year. But uh, I, I certainly know that our fans will enjoy seeing some familiar names again. We certainly didn't expect Drew Frederick to be on the 2020, 20, uh, excuse me, the 2021 baseball team as a fifth, uh, sixth year senior. Uh, Dalton Sinkfield, another returning senior starter. Uh, those guys were supposed to be gone, so it'll be, uh, I think our fans will enjoy this team. You know, one area where you do have some new faces, and it was clearly a focus this offseason, is on the mound. Um, Coach Hancock, Coach Gerke did, did wonders on the recruiting trail. Talk about, you know, what you can expect from uh, this upcoming class of pitchers. Well, you're right. There was a design to that. We were an older pitching staff last year, a lot of seniors. And some of those guys are back. We, we you know, Lance Johnson is uh, Max Newton. Uh, Zach Moore, some, some seniors from 20 are now seniors in 21. So we had a high recruiting pitching year because of the loss on paper. Well, now we've got a higher group of pitchers, which I'm excited about. But I think the fans are going to like the new arms that we've brought in. Uh, we've got a nice mixture of high school, junior college, and a couple of four years in that group of new arms. Uh, we made a conscious effort to try to get more left-handed pitching. I think we accomplished that in terms of ability. Uh, that's something we've suffered with here through the years, a number of lefties. We've always had a couple, but not a volume. And this year, I think we brought in four guys that can help us right away. And that'll give us more balance, both in the rotation and in the bullpen. Uh, you know, the only guy we lost off last year's team of significance in terms of opportunity was Levi. Uh, drafted in the fourth round, of course, signed his contract. Uh, he will be impossible to replace in that Friday night role. He's as good as we've ever had in that role. But I can tell you as we sit here today, and we're a long way from opening day, and we've still got a lot of questions, Orlando Ortiz looks to be that guy that can slide into that number one slot. He pitched in the two hole last year as a first year transfer. He looks better than at any point he looked last spring. He worked extremely hard on his own during that down period. He's stronger. Uh, his arm strength is better. His pitch ability is better. He's excited and wants the opportunity to be our number one starter. So when you've got an experienced guy you can start with, then you plug in some of the new pieces. I think collectively it's as good a group of arms we've had here in some time.